Hi everyone. Um, been working on my electronic referee project for Element 14 and Texas Instruments over the last few days, and one of the things I needed to figure out was how to turn on and off the sensors that I'm using. I have some Omron industrial sensors. They take about 40 odd milliamps per um, unit, and there's 10 of them for this, so that's quite a lot of power, and they all run at 24 volts as well. Um, a standard launch pad, which is the, the devices that I'm using, is these little ones here. Um, there you go, there's one. All right. They can't drive very much output. Some of these are very, very low. They run on 3.3 volts. The best you're probably going to get out of one of the pins is maybe 10 milliamps. And obviously that's not enough to be able to drive this kind of load. Um, and aside from that, these loads are 24 volts. So if you get that anywhere near one of these microcontrollers, it's going to get fried. So the second part of the problem was the electronic referee is designed to go on a tennis court. So you have these sensors that send a beam across the court to detect whether the ball has hit the line or whether it's hit just outside the line, but within that area that is difficult for an umpire to detect whether the ball is in or out. If you consider the fact that this ball is traveling at uh, quite a speed, I think with the professional players, the ball could be traveling at anything up to about 140 miles an hour. That means that you know, for a ball that's probably about three inches across, um, it's going to travel its length in 100 microseconds. All right? Now, when that hits the ground and bounces back up again, you can imagine that it's going to hit the ground and it's going to be gone in less than a millisecond. So the hue and I really cannot determine that. I mean, it can get a rough idea and track the ball, um, but you, you know, to be able to say that it exactly went on the line or it was you know, uh, five millimeters on the fault side of the line is a very, very difficult call. So with the project, I've got these 24 volt sensors. They're going to go across the beams. That's not an issue. They can detect the, bow the ball going through the beam and uh, send a signal to the microcontroller. But like I said, they run on 24 volts. The microcontrollers run on 3.3 volts. So I need it to be optically isolated so that it protects the controllers. I need to be able to use the opto-isolator to drive um, the load on and off. But of course, an opto-isolator is still just a small transistor in an uh, integrated circuit dipped kind of package, or the ones I'm using they are anyway. Um, they have maybe a 50 milliamp or so maximum current capacity. So I need to augment that with an extra um, power transistor of some sort on the output um, in order to turn the load on and off. And what I was initially looking at, and I just put a, you know, I put a video up um, just a little bit ago regarding driving um, field effect transistors and regular transistors with a microcontroller, was to use an N-channel um, logic level FET. Now, the, that's fine, but the problem with this is that um, I would be switching the negative rail of all of the sensors. So there's a chance that um, you'd get stray voltages still floating around because the positive side is still connected and when you're dealing with things like this you really want to keep all the grounds connected at all times and you really want to just take the power away on the positive rail so that means using a different device and the one that I ended up picking was the only um, p-channel FETs that I had I actually had uh, salvaged them off some old electronics boards and they were in a small um, SOT surface mount package in fact I have some um, on a board here that I actually made up and if you look at that it's actually on these it's this one here you can see right there it's pretty damn small and what I had to do was solder onto a uh, adapter card which I had and then I could put it into an 8 pin dip socket now, these are the two opto isolators that are part of the board as you can see there's the microcontroller underneath it's a launch pad and this card here stacks right on top of the launch pad using the sockets and now it can control through the opto isolators it can read the sensor inputs and one of the opto isolators is working in the opposite direction and it can turn this FET on and off and even though that FET is tiny, it's surface mount it actually has the ability of switching um, tens of amps and at up to uh, in excess of 30 volts so that's pretty good for what I need where did I put my pen? Oh, I just had a pen here, there we go um, it works very well. It's P-channel. Um, four of the pins on one side of the chip actually are all connected together. 
um, for the drain and three pins on the other side are all connected together for the source. So we have this um, FET now. So um, typically it's drawn like this. And because it's a P-channel, the arrow comes out and we have this going up to, in our case, um, V+, plus, because that's what we want to switch. And then the other end, so this is the um, source and this is the drain, I think I'm getting it the right way around. And there's our gate and this one is going to have the load here and then that's going to go to ground. Okay, so this is what we want to do, but on the other side here we have a microcontroller that's running on 3.3 volts. All right. So this is going from 0 to 3.3 volts when it turns on. So how do you use this to drive this? Now, because this is a P-channel FET, this gate has to come down to, and it's not a logic level, it has to come about 10 volts below V+, in order to turn this on in saturation so that you have a minimal amount of uh, power dissipation. Well, the first thing we need to do is obviously make sure it doesn't turn on on its own. Now, because it's a FET, um, the gate is extremely high input impedance, and so if you don't tie it to something, it's going to just float around with static and everything else. You just touch your finger on it, and you can actually make it turn on and off without any additional circuitry. So that's no good for us. So what we do is we basically just put a pull-up resistor to the gate, and because it's an end channel, this remember this gate has to go negative for it to turn on. If we make this something like 10K, um, it's just enough to pull this up and prevent it turning on, and so there we, we, we're good. And this, this load out here is going to be um, all of the sensors that are going to be 24 volts. So this is going to be a 24 volt load going off to my um, industrial sensors out in the tennis court. So now we've got this issue that I have to manage plus 24 volts. I've got to take this pin down to at least 12, 14 volts in order to make sure this thing is turned on into saturation. Um, I can go all the way down to zero volts. That's fine because remember this is very, very high input impedance. So it's not like I'm going to be drawing any current through it, although there is capacitance, so there's going to be a little bit of a switch on surge. Um, the 10K will limit the amount of current that actually flows through here in total to just a few milliamps anyway. So I can't just connect this to here because that's 24 volts into a 3 volt 3.3 volt device. So using an opto isolator, what I do is I will simply put, um, or what I've done is put a um, 470 ohm resistor, so that keeps the current low, feeding it into an LED, which is actually built into the opto isolator. This is a separate, these two zero volts are not connected. Remember, this is our control load, this is our microcontroller side. So this zero volts is connected to this one. This is off there. They're, they're not the same. This LED here is going to illuminate when I pass a current through it. Now, 470 ohms is going to keep this very, very low um, power output. I could put a lot more there, but I want to minimize how much current I'm drawing out of this. Now, the other side of this is a transistor. Now, the ones that I've used, I got from Element 14. I'll put the part number into the um, video, along with the video in the notes, but um, it's got a Darlington output stage. Now, I'm not going to draw it right next to this, I'm just going to put it up here. And what a Darlington output stage is, is it's two transistors working together. All right, so there's the first transistor, there's the collector, and then the second transistor is the base is connected again, and then there's the other emitter, and the collectors are connected together as well. So we have a little circuit like this. Now, there is no base really on this. I mean, there is, but it's actually light sensitive. So this is the other end of this opto isolator circuit. Now, because it's a Darlington pair, um, you know, a typical transistor that's a, a, like a low power, low voltage kind of transistor would probably have a gain of maybe 75, 100 or something like that. And that's great for a lot of applications, but in our case, because we're energizing it with some light, 
you, it, you don't want to have it working in its linear region. By using a Darlington pair, this one has, say, we'll just assume gain of 100. Even if this one was exactly the same transistor, that also has a gain of 100 as well. And this arrangement actually multiplies the gains together. So you've got a gain of 100 here, a gain of 100 here. Now you've got a gain of 10,000. So pretty much, you know, even microamps of current or energizing um, light going into the base of this transistor is going to turn this on enough that this one is going to be driven into saturation. So if I actually take this 10K in the gate of this and actually connect it to the collector of this photocoupler and then take the emitter and connect it to here, the minute I put even the smallest amount of current through this LED, it's going to energize this first transistor and it's going to drive the other side of this optocoupler into saturation and it's going to pull the voltage here from the 24 volt supply all the way down to virtually zero. Remember there's going to be maybe one volt or half a volt drop across this um, transistor inside the optocoupler but it's going to be minimal and because the current is limited by this 10K um, you're not going to heat this up or anything else. So the optocouplers I've used um, this is the optocoupler, so I'm just putting a box around it so you can see. Um, there's four of them in the one package. So I already used four because the um, boards that I built to go on the launch pads, they have three inputs each because I'm going to cross um, matrix the, the sensors across the court because of some issues with the armrons and the beam widths and everything. So there's going to be five sensors on each side, so one side is going to have three emitters and two sensors the other side is going to have three sensors and two emitters. So that means that um, you know, at a maximum I'm going to be using three optocouplers coming in to um, detect what state the sensors are in and I'm going to have um, one of them already going out and connected to uh, allow me to invert the sensor output to be on when it's no light detected or on when there is light detected. Um, so that's just a control feature I just kept and um, connected up into the microcontroller. Now I, this, this additional one, therefore I need to add another optocoupler. Um, there's four devices in each little 16-pin dip package. I'm just using one of them for now. Um, I may add other things for other projects later on as I feel fit, but for now just one of them is going to go in there and it's going to do this for me. So this FET, even though it's as small as it is, it can handle like 30 plus volts, it can handle um, I think it's probably in excess of 20 amps. Like I said, I'll put the link to the data sheet in the um, write-up when I put this in. And it's going to drive into saturation, which means that all of the current and the volts drop is going to be across the load. This thing, it doesn't even need a heat sink. As small as it is, it doesn't need a heat sink even driving this 24 volt load. Um, I wouldn't switch it on and off quickly. One, the um, a lot of optocouplers are limited in their bandwidth. Um, the particular ones I'm using here, because they're Darlington and everything else, I think will go up to close to a megahertz, um, which obviously is more than fast enough for most um, PWM light dimming circuitry and everything else. But if you're running it that fast, this thing is going to be running a lot of time in its linear region as it's switching, and therefore it's going to get hot. Um, I'm just going to be turning it on, leaving it on for maybe 10 seconds or more, while it's in the mode waiting for a tennis ball to come by and then it's going to get switched off again to conserve power. Um, but this is a circuit that you could actually use for um, any microcontroller where you wanted to drive a load and you wanted to have high side switching on it. If you wanted to have low side switching, again, you just have to move this transistor. Um, you just drive it in the opposite way or you can have um, a peach and an end channel fed and, uh, you, know, you just switch these two around, you have an N-channel FET and you have this driving, uh, you have a pull-down resistor and you have this thing when it switches on to drive the volts positive and you'll get the exact same effect. So um, if you wanted to do that, that would be very easy to do. And maybe I'll put the circuitry, uh, the circuit for that in the write-up as well on the blog, but I'm not going to go through the discussion right now. It's really, the, in principle, it's exactly the same. One of the other benefits of this, by the way, using an optocoupler here, is that this is a 3.3 volt system. It also can be on a completely isolated supply, so it's protected. Um, this 
is running on 24 volts, but it could be floating. It could be sitting, um, you know, a thousand volts different to this side. These particular optocouplers, um, I believe, provide about 4,000 volts um, isolation between the LED side and the transistor drive side. So whilst this has a limit of 30, 40 volts, whatever it is, between the collector and the emitter, the, the isolation allows that 30, 40 volts to be almost anywhere within a huge range of um, circuitry. So this could be actually connected to uh, something that's driving power directly from uh, maybe a main supply. So if you had um, you know, 110 volts being uh, rectified directly um, to effectively, you know, 100 odd volts DC, and you were driving um, some kind of load from that. As long as you've got the right kind of FET to handle that voltage, um, and you know, obviously you'd have to, and you were deriving, a, you know, a lower control voltage, but it was still attached to that mains, then you could still do it. Now, obviously, if you're doing that kind of thing, you need to take care. You need to know what you're doing, so don't just rush off and try it. Um, but in this case, where we've got a 24 volt supply, we don't have to have, um, you know, and don't want to have the direct drive capability from the microcontroller to it, because this could drive a logic level FET or something directly. The Opto Isolator provides you a lot of flexibility in how you can achieve that. And in my case, this is what I've done to drive all of my sensors. So I'm going to have two boards. Each one's going to have effectively um, five sensors attached to it. All right, and it's going to be able to handle that no problem at all. So I will have another video soon that shows all of this working, but I just wanted to go through this to show how I solved that issue, and also it'll be handy for anybody that's trying to uh, find a control output where it needs to be isolated, um, but you're not dealing with lots of high voltages. You know, it's it's restricted to sort of like well, this circuit here actually will handle anything from you know a f maybe a five volt supply here and you know it's still going to be 5, 10 amps, whatever you like and it'll ha be able to handle anything up to about 24 volts. I wouldn't go too much higher than that especially if you've got inductive loads because the back EMS could damage something and the transistors in here are limited to about 30 volts and so is this one in my particular case for the one I used. Um, but the whole principle is you can control big loads, have it completely isolated, it's minimal amount of components, you've got one resistor, one FET, so two resistors uh, one FET and an opto isolator, and that's it, and you're able to control this kind of load. So for me, for my uh, electronic referee, it's been uh, a very, very handy circuit to put together, and it's included on my boards. Um, for you, you know, this will allow you to drive anything you like, you know, uh, DC motors, um, LEDs, etc., etc., and it's completely isolated. So if you have one power supply that's 24 volts stuck on top of a closet or something like that to drive some LEDs in the kitchen and you have a microcontroller using maybe a USB little power supply or even a couple of batteries um, you can provide this isolation so that no matter what happens with the power side of things it's not going to do any harm to the microcontroller side. Alright, anyway, that's it. Thank you.